Hello friends. First day of September, in the month I was born. And uh, going to do you another yarn this morning. Um, it's also, I think, the first or second day of spring and the bunyips will be getting around out back now. They, go, they get around chasing, chasing after a partner and, and as everything else does in the springtime and uh, and the Min Min lights will be out there dancing around on the on the black soil plains and through the through the sparse sparsely wooded areas uh, where you usually find the Min Min lights and there'll be travellers out there running around all over the place looking to take a photo or get a recording of the of the bunyip scream. And um, anyway, this little yarn I'm going to do for you is, relates to all that stuff. And uh, I see old, poor old Johnny Howard was a bit crook the other day. He got his, got his appendix taken out. Well, Johnny Howard brought in the uh, beautiful gun laws that this country's now got. And some agree with and some don't. But anyway, he brought them in. And um, so you've heard of, heard of Johnny Howard and you've heard of the gun laws. So, this is a little story called A Mystery of the Outback. This is number three, so I hope I get through it this time. I'm doing it off the top of my head, by the way. Well, you've heard of the bunyip, and you've heard of the Min Min lights. You've heard of the gun laws. Well, now hear the legend. This is a yarn as told to me, verbatim, well, maybe or no. It's a bushy's yarn from wild out back, and you know how these stories grow. A man and his dog, the story goes, were camped by a worked out mine. The stars shone overhead that night, and the pair were doing fine, until from the yawning mouth of that worked out pit came a sound to chill the bone. A sort of a screech, a sort of a scream that tapered to a sort of a moan. Well, the dog sat up and his hair sat up, his lips curled back in a snarl. And he matched the sound from that awful pit with a sort of a ho. Well, a man carried a gun for protection. Gun laws were different back then. He took aim at the hole and shot it. He missed, so he shot it again. With the dog barking blue bloody murder and the sounds coming out of that pit. With the man firing shots at random You'd think the devil himself would quit. But the man thought he'd cornered a bunyip. He was eager to take it in tow. He pictured himself being famous. He would take it on tour as a show. Until his musing on fame was ruptured like a boil on the back of your neck when silence fell over the outback of stars there wasn't a speck the dog cowed down in a corner and corners are hard to find out back and the gaping mouth of that worked out pit closed over with nary a crack well the man was convinced that the bunyip lived somewhere here in the ground he wouldn't be robbed of the glory. That bunyip had to be found. Now it must be told here in the story that a bunyip is a horrible sight. You'll never see one in the daytime because they only come out at night. So our man set up camp on the outback, just him and his old dog named Min. Every night they hunted the bunyip. Every day, well, they liked to sleep in. 
until. For years many bone weary traveller who e'er on the out backward roam would see his hunting lamp flicker, hear him call to his dog to come home. Min, 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 min. Well, in the true tradition of Outback, the Min Min story has grown, and its horrors affect the unwary who dare to go out there alone. And that, my friends, is the story. It's a bit hard to take, I know. But the bunyip has never been captured, and I've never seen one in a show. There you go, folks. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you later. Bye.